In this video, we're going to look at how to beat the London system. This game took place in the FIDE World Cup. Let's introduce the players. With the white pieces, we have Vladislav Artemyev, 23 years old, world number 39, Russian number 10. And with the black pieces, Sergei Karyakin, 31 years old, world number 12, Russian number 3. How do we beat the London system? Well, we're going to find out. Artemyev has white, Kayakin has black, d4, knight f6, bishop f4, d5, e3, and now c5. Striking in the center, also giving yourself the option to play queen b6, knight c3, the Hobava London system. Early knight move, because after e6, now you go knight b5. Knight c7 check is a threat, so you have to stop that with knight a6 only move. c3, now you have a London pawn structure. A triangle pawn structure in the center. Bishop e7, h3, always a useful move in the London, give your bishop a retreating square, castle, knight f3, and bishop d7. This is one reason I wanted to go through this game, because I'd never seen this setup before. The way black deployed his pieces made it look like, well really, in this game, white didn't get any advantage. So bishop, he attacks the knight, but white has his bishop defending it, so no big deal. White defends it again with his pawn, and now c4, locking it up. So only the pawn is defending it. Bishop e2. Maybe a better move is actually b3. Bishop e2 was played in the game, so let's take a detour. Let's actually have a look at b3. Then we'll get back to the game. Now, what's the point of b3? You're breaking up the structure. Maybe Artemyev didn't want to go for this because queen a5. At the moment, black is threatening to take, and then queen takes pawn. So one way to react is b4, rook c1, queen d2. If b4 is played, this is absolutely terrible. Maybe this is something Artemyev was scared about. b4 is just time to crash through. Take, take, take. Check, king e2, and now a6. Kick the knight away. If you go back, then bishop takes a4, and look at this. I mean, black has three pawns for the knight. Black is just crashing through, and also, white has just some silly king in the center. So after b3, queen a5, what else could white have done? Well, knight d2 is actually possible. And after take, knight takes b3, then the queen has to go back, queen b6, queen d8, and then the game goes on. After queen a5, what if rook c1? Defending with the rook. Take take and now you have knight e4 this absolutely brilliant move <laughs> i couldn't believe this variation that's why i wanted to show you you attack c3 with the knight and the queen take knight takes c3 losing queen d2 bishop b4 knight e4 is next doesn't matter you take the rook check and black is crashing through get your queen back black is totally winning back to the game bishop e2 Take, take, now knight c7. This transition has worked out very well for black because this pawn is now weakness. Now white can get rid of it, but then he's really getting rid of his own London bishop. Doesn't want to do that, so queen a4 played. Now bishop d6. Kayakin understands that this bishop is very strong, so when your opponent has a very strong piece, it's time to offer a trade. Bishop d6, a fair trade. Bishop g5, no. No trade, and now a6. Black is... Getting a lot of pressure on the queen side. Take. Rook takes. Queen has to go back to d1. Take, take, and now queen a8. So a lot of things have cleared up on the a file. Castle. At the same time, when you castle, you defend your queen. Knight e4. Very powerful knight attacking the London bishop. Now bishop comes back to f4. Take, take. Even though y is control of the square, I mean, it's not that important. Now we get a massive trade. Take, take. Rook a8. Take, take. So we get this end game. Let's see what happens. King f1, b5. All these pawns on light squares really do restrict this bishop on b2. On e2, I mean. Bishop d1, knight b6, knight e1, f6. Bishop c2, king f7, king e2, knight back, knight f3, h6. Getting the pawn off the light square. h4, king e7, knight d2, king d7. Knight b1, king c6. Black needs to get this working. And then he can try and find a way to crash through. 
93, 98, rerouting. So there's the pawn break. So nothing, nothing, and now here we go. King a5. Cool journey from the king. From g8 to a5, assisting the pawn break. Knight c2, you stop it. King in. Not only was this one of black's ideas, but also going after the b2 pawn. Knight b4. Allowing the king in. King c1. It's not so bad. But maybe knight b4 is actually a blunder because of f5. When we look at this position, black has played a wonderful endgame so far. He's locked out this bishop on h7. We have this minor piece endgame. Two knights against knight and bishop. But black's king is going to be the difference. Very, very active king. And also, really, the truth is you shut out this bishop on h7. Knight a6. Planning to go knight c5 check. So you stop it with knight a4. Very nice active move. You stop white's threat, but you also have this idea in the future. Knight c5 check. Forcing the knights off. Take, take. This pawn is a runner? No. Knight e8 just stops it because you control the c7 square. There's no way for white to get through. Bishop g6. You attack knight. Knight c7. Knight c7 is such a good move because you defend your weakness, which is really holding every single pawn together, and you stop white coming through. Bishop h5. It's actually really funny, this position. If white had two moves, king b1 and then bishop d1 is mate all of a sudden. King goes back to a4. King d2. b4. Finally, there's your pawn break. Move 44. King e3. If you go king c2 or king c1, doesn't matter. The point is b3 check. Just shutting it out. Now, why is it okay to shut it down? This king is not going after this pawn anymore. You're going to come back for this. Take. And after d4, black is going to find a way to crash through. King e3. King b3. Black has a winning endgame. Take. And that's how confident Kayakin is in his position. He doesn't even take the more threatening pawn, you could say. He takes on b2. This square is guarded by the knight. Black has his own threats, and it's just way too much. It's just such a well-played game from Kayakin. That's how he beat the London system today. King d4. Check. King e5. Push. Bishop d1. And you just push. And there's no way to stop the pawns marching home. A very, very well-played game by Sergei Kayakin. Let's summarize this game. We have the London system. c5. And now, if knight b5 with bishop f4, only move knight a6. You've got to stop it. Black now plays bishop d7. White defends, and now c4, cutting off the bishop. So this is a cool setup. Apply it in your own games. This knight looks very aggressive, but it's actually a target. Bishop e2. White didn't actually break out with b3. Bishop e2. Take, take. Knight c7. A weakness. The knight has gone from a6 to c7. Is now attacking white's b5 pawn. Queen a4. Bishop d6. Understanding. The London bishop offering a trade. a6. Opening up the a file. Take, take. Take, take. Queen a8. Massive trade here. Knight e4. Great move. Perfect knight in the middle. Take, take. Take, take. <laughs> take. Rook a8, I mean. <laughs> take, take. And then we get this technical endgame. Cool move. b5. You need to get your pawns moving. And here we go. Right. Two knights against knight and bishop. Where's the breakthrough? It's b4. How did he do it? He got his king round to a5. From g8 all the way to a5. King in to b3. Now f5. Shutting out the bishop. Great move. Very accurate play by Sergei. Knight a4. Another good move. Got to stop the check. He does it anyway. Doesn't matter. Knight e8. Knight c7, blockading white's only asset in the position. Get the king out of danger, and there we go. Finally, it's move 44. I know I mentioned it in the game. If we look at, if we go back a bit, when did, really, when did this idea even start? When did this idea, right here, b5. Move 22 and move 44. So really, 22 moves later, black finds Black plays the breakthrough with b4. Wow. King e3. King in. Active king. That's it. Very confident. You take that pawn. You run your own pawns home. And that's how Kayakin beat the London system today. In the World Cup, the format. Two classical games. It was 1-1. Then, two rapid games. 25 minutes each. It was 1-1 again. One win each. 
And now the 10 minute games. Sergei just won this game with black and he also got a draw with white. So Sergei Kayakin is through to the next round of the World Cup. If you want to check out another World Cup video, why not this one? Daniel Dubov's crushing victory against the Slav defense. Absolutely incredible game from Daniel Dubov. But if you don't like that game, you might like this one. Ali Reza Ferruja beats Magnus Carlsen in 29 seconds. This is a bullet video. Thanks for watching.